$200. A Super Nintendo setup costs twice as much as the old system. For the money, the company promises better pictures, sound, and adventure. Now you're playing with power. Super power. You're the king, I tell you! You're the king! Only for Super NES. You're listening to the SNES Podcast, with your hosts, Soul Blazer and George. Hello everybody, welcome to Super NES Podcast, episode number 131 this time. Uh, he is George, I'm Greg, here to bring you another like fun game this time around, or so I hope at least. Oh, I see what you did, you put my name first so I couldn't say anything. <laughs> That actually wasn't. That actually, that actually was not my intent. I did. I just thought I'd I'm tired things. of your crap. I'm putting <laughs> your name first. Well, I was trying to be kind. It, like mix things up a little bit here. But <laughs> uh, I am never satisfied. <laughs> but we are covering a George game this time around. So uh, and so wait, you didn't pick this one? Uh, you're the one who has the. <laughs> You're the one who has the who has the obsession for Japanese only games. It seems like so. I didn't say it was. A, it's not. It's not an obsession. It just so happens that the Japanese games are better. Ah, uh, some <laughs> cases perhaps, but <laughs> so, mm. but uh, yeah, but uh, no. Uh, this this game definitely. Uh, this game definitely could come out. I uh, come out in the West. Um, you know, it's a shame it didn't. But. Uh, so we are covering one of the uh, Fire Emblem games of this time around. Uh, the Japanese, the Japanese title of this, which I'm going to try my best to hear to pronounce correctly, uh, this particular game is a uh, Fire Emblem uh, Manchu no Nazo, uh, which translates, uh, which translates roughly to Mystery of the Emblem. Uh, this was the third series. This was the third game in the series. Uh, came out for the Super NES, um, well, well, technically Super Famicom, you know, I've said it before, I'm just going to call it Super NES just for ease of, ease of not tripping over my, um, uh, my tongue every single minute. Mm. Uh, January, uh, January 1994, so kind of a mid-release, uh, Super NES game, uh, as far as, the, um, um, as far as that goes. Um, uh, the famous, uh, the famous Gunpai, uh, uh, Yoki was the producer of the game, along with some of the uh, you know, designers were the designers were most of the same staff that we had worked the um, had worked the first two games in the series. Uh, this is a this is a this is a tactical role playing series which is a series to which was all uh, which was developed and still is being produced by uh, Intelligent Systems. Um, I don't believe we covered them before that before on the before in the podcast or so as uh, so, uh, so, so I'll talk about them a little bit. Uh, they were founded back in December of 1986, uh, like. Uh, like Cal Laboratories, they have been they've been, they've been, they've been closely associated with Nintendo for throughout most of their history in producing games uh, for them. Um, and many games they either made by themselves or also worked in conjunction with uh, Nintendo's uh, R and D One, uh, the famous uh, the famous uh, uh, um, uh, probably probably the most famous uh, the famous of, of Nintendo's in house production teams out of several. So. Um, and many games intelligence systems, intelligence, intelligence systems worked on over the years we didn't know about that they did in the West because it was very common in these 90s, and particularly in Japan, to kind of hide uh, who produced games to the point where, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, to the point where even nowadays we don't even know for many games who actually worked on the games uh, because that information was kept hidden uh, like for so many years. But I love know- it when they hide information. <laughs> But yeah, uh, either by themselves or uh, um, yeah, uh, but either by themselves or in conjunction with R&D One, uh, Intelligent Systems worked on many of the best NES games over the years. They worked on they worked on uh, uh, Mario Brothers, Tennis, uh, Duck Hunt, um, uh, Metroid, um, uh, Wrecking Crew, uh, Famicom Wars, uh, Sim City uh, for the Super NES, um, Super Metroid, Tetris Attacks. The Super Famicom Wars, the Paper Mario series, uh, the WarioWare series. Um, I could go on and on here. A lot of games over the years. Uh, Dragon Quest Wars. Um, 
yeah, so they're primarily known like for their work, uh, like in the Fire Emblem, uh, the Advanced, well, uh, the Advanced Wars. Technically, it's the War series. I, I just, I, you know, I, I tend to think of it as Advanced Wars because the GBA games are the ones I played the most out of. Uh, the Pip, the, uh, the Pip Mario and the Pip Mario like Noir, uh, you know, like Noir War series. So, very good company. A lot of great games under their belt over the years. So, um, Fire Emblem. I'm gonna, so Fire Emblem as a series has a long history. So I'm, so I'm, uh, so I'm, uh, so I'm just gonna try to talk about this series real quick here. And actually, the first game we can talk about for a moment, George, because it's actually very relevant, to, like relevant in this case, because uh, the very first game in the series was Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, which came out for the uh, um, uh, the Famicom in 1990. And it mentions relevant because the fact that this game we're covering this podcast, uh, uh, Mr. The Emblem actually includes kind of a uh, a remake. Not a full remake, but at least a remake of, um, um, of that first game. Um, as um, you know, the first like two parts, which is very interesting. You don't really see that being done in games of uh, like this time period. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, after that, yeah, so after that there was Gaiden, which was like a, 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 a as the name suggests, kind of a spin-off, a, um, a spin-off game. In 1992, and in this game, Mystery of the Emblem was the third game in the series. Uh, the series is now up to... Let me count here real quick. Um, oh, wow. Did I count that right? I think I did. You tell me. 16 games in the series. I'm not counting, like, spinoffs. Um, uh, like, offshoot games. So... That um, might sound right. Yeah. 100%. The most recent game came out a few months ago for the Switch called 3... Um, uh, Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses. So the series is still um, like alive and well. So uh, we did not see the series here in the West until Fire Emblem, just called something called Fire Emblem over here in the West, uh, like the GBA 2003. Uh, in Japan, the game was known as uh, um, you know, um, in Japan the game was known as translated to uh, the Blazing Blade, but because it um, uh, but because it was the first game we got here in the West, it just called Fire Emblem. And that, and that's our first exposure, um, exposure, exposure to the series also here in the West. That's a very good game. Uh, I played a lot of the Fire Emblem games after that because I love the, um, uh, because I like the series so much. But I've not played the most recent games. Uh, what's your history with the, uh, 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 history, history franchise, George? Why do you want to cover this? Uh, I like Fire Emblem. Uh, so that's actually a good question. I can't really remember. I mean, Fire Emblem's a series that um even over here in the west we've had for a while mm -hmm. yep i can't remember the first was it the first one the first one in the series that we got was it the gamecube one no i, I think i uh, no, i just no i i no i I'm just sorry. talked about it uh but yeah, i'm Island, sorry i drew a, a complete blank it was gba gba yes yeah that's right i'm yeah. sorry no you're completely right you did say that uh, um, the GameCube one was past I, the radius. Oh, you know what? You know what? I got confused with. Uh, that's the first time I saw it. I believe mm. was on the GameCube. That's yep. what I was thinking. Yep, you're thinking. Yep, yep. You're probably thinking. Yep, you're probably thinking of. You're probably thinking of Path of Radiance, which came in 2005. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was the first time I ever saw the series. Like, yeah. Like that's back in the game. day. Yeah, I never played it. Oh, <laughs> I okay. never got it. Yeah, which I is was. A big old yeah. shame. I was so star for GameCube software that um, you know that um, you know, um, you know, that was definitely like a game I bought. So because there just wasn't very much unique stuff for the GameCube that I wanted to play. So uh, Ooh, I did. that's that's a rough thing to say considering yeah, how many yeah. interesting games there are on there. I but... know. I, I mean, like, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. This is not a secret. A secret. Uh, I've talked about this before in the past. Uh, the GameCube. The GameCube has some great games. It's just that the library of the library of like must play games is very small on that system. I think. Probably, uh, uh, probably less than a dozen. Um, you know, I'd argue, but but Path of Radiance is definitely uh, Path of Radiance is definitely uh, is definitely on that list. It's a very good game. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was a thing I knew about ever since the GameCube release, and I I don't know. I'm kind of drawing a blank. Actually, you know, it was just something that I had in the back of my mind for a while, and mm. then. At some point, I got one of the games on the DS, and I played a bit of, and I was like, yeah, Fire hmm. Emblem, wahoo. <laughs> I don't know. And then I want to check this out. I right. really don't know. I don't have a crazy history. I can't really remember. Like, other than just keeping, like, 
Oh yeah, the Fire Emblem game on GameCube. Like keeping that in the back of my mind for like years and years and years. Other right. than that, I don't really yeah, have I, much history with it. I think you mentioned. Yeah, I think you mentioned. I think you mentioned in the past that you have played some of the Fire Emblem Warriors games, which are the co-op spin-off ones. Uh, no, I didn't oh. play that. Oh, okay, I don't right, have yeah. that game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's um. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks pretty good. You know, like um, just a a common. You know, a combination of Fire Emblem, like, meets, like, you know, like, um, uh, uh Dynasty Warriors, so. There was yeah. also, uh, there was also, there was also, there was also Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Heroes, like, the, uh, I you mean, know, which is a mobile, uh, which is a mobile version of the game, so. Uh, there, um, after some of the other, like, you know, like, spinoffs, but, so. Uh, yeah, the Fire Emblem series has done very well, uh, here in the West since it, uh, I mean, since it, uh, I mean, since the first game came out here, so. Uh, you know, like, so, like I said, a new game just came out a few months ago, we're probably gonna, you know, like, you are probably gonna, uh, we're probably gonna, we're probably gonna continue to see, uh, new games. However, unfortunately, unfortunately, most of the older games have not come out here in the West. Uh, even though they have it remade several times, this game also, this, this game, this game's also included in, included, like, in that list. Um, I mentioned that before, how this game is kind of like a two-part game, almost. The first part, the first part's a remake of the original Fire Emblem game, uh, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. Uh, for, uh, for, uh, a very cool name by the name, um, uh, by the way. You know, I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the second game's original story. Uh, this game, Mystery of the Emblem, has been, has been, uh, has been re-released twice. It also came, uh, it, uh, uh, it was first remade, uh, for the... For the uh, and I did not and I did not know this until I was doing research. This also this also came out on the Teleview, uh, in Japan. Uh, BS, oh, yeah, BS Fire, know. BS Fire Emblem in 1997. Hey, uh, you watch your mouth. <laughs> uh, so um, it's very close. To, yeah, it, yeah, it's very close to first. It's very close to this game. Um, just like you know, it just simply. Just as, like it's time based instead, because of course the service is only the service the service is only available for a few hours or a few hours a, a night each day. So the objective in this game was just, was to try to defeat um um you know defeat defeat all the stages before the time might ran out. Right. So um the, uh, and the second remake was the DS uh, Fire Emblem New Mystery of the Emblem, which came out in, um to, to uh, uh which came on twenty which came on twenty ten. And this game was also released in 2017 as part of the Japanese version of the Classic NES edition. Uh, but as I mentioned before, none of these none of these remakes have ever come out here in the West. So this is a game. Right. That you, so this is a game that's remained totally Japanese only. However, because, however, however, because this game got very high marks, this, this one this, this was the first this was one of the first games in the series to be fan translated. The fan translated version has been uh, um, has been out there for a good 10 years at this point. So actually even longer because the work on that started before that, but. You know, it seems like the um, it, it seems like the definitive version came out two thousand nine. So uh, so uh, like so yeah, so if you want to play it, uh, that uh, you know that ROM's very you know that patch ROM's very easy to find. So, but uh, I would hope so. Yep. So the game itself, um, most people probably know what tactical role playing game it is. It just like um, it's a uh, it's a role playing game that also involves. Um, more strategy than a traditional uh, role-playing game because it's like a top-down view where you're, um, you know, you know, where each stage, each battle, you get to, um, uh, you get to pick your, um, to pick and move your units on a map. Uh, Sam decided you want to like move and move them over here, attack this guy, you know, give this action, whatnot. So, and after all, uh, and so after, and so when you attack somebody, uh, in most in most in most tactical role playing games, the action switches to the action switches the action switches, switches to a side view one on one uh, combat sequence. We get to see the result of your attack, um, and then after all your units have gone, the enemy uh, gets to move their units and so on and so on um, until the battle's done with. And, and in between battles, you get story. You also sometimes uh, you also sometimes depending on the game get the option to go into towns to buy stuff. Uh, talk to people and whatnot. So, um, yeah, so it's a very, you know, I enjoy, you know, these are two genres I've always loved, uh, role-playing games and tactical games. So, like, you know, so, so, uh, like, so games like this and, like, Advanced Wars just really, like, appeal to me a lot because, like, it's, uh, um, because, because it's an almost perfect, it's an almost, almost perfect, perfect marriage, um, of both genres. 
Yeah. Um, so, uh, this game, so this game is a, uh, because it's a, it's because, ha um, um, so half the game, as I mentioned before, is a remake of the first game. Uh, the, the second part of the game is, a, the second game of the story is a sequel, uh, to that game. So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like getting, like, you know, the best of both worlds, almost, like in this one. Uh, the plot is, the, the plot of this game is basic fantasy stuff, but, uh, um, you know, before it is, you know, it's, like, pretty good. Um, so, um... So like yeah, so yeah, like in, so, 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 yeah. In very basic terms, you're playing like you know like a rural, a member of the rural family and his friends that are trying to like you know defend the you know defend the kingdom, blah 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 kind of stuff. But so, uh, it's a good story. I think the later the later Fire for the later Fire uh, Fire Emblem games, of course, of course, do it better because they have like more space and experience to work with and whatnot. But for what this is, um, you know, it, it works. It, you know, it gets the job done. So. I mean, you got to keep in mind that there are two books in this game. True. Yep. Um, and one book is actually the first game uh, with some stuff cut. Right. Yep. And the uh, second book is the se the whole second game. Right. So. so I don't know if it was a like a thing like in development. Oh, we have a bunch more space left. Why don't we put the first game in there as well? Or uh, if it was something they did the, at the beginning and then they're like, oh, well, we can't fit any, we can't fit anything terribly new now because we have all the space used. I'm not well, sure, but actually, I kind of agree yeah. that it is kind of simple. I was going to talk about that a little bit, a little bit. You're, you're pretty close. To I'm always jumping ahead, Greg. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. Like you're pretty close to your first guess. Um, uh, this was initially, uh, these, uh, these two books were initially conceived as separate projects. Um, you know, and the okay. work teams, um, so the work teams, so it's like the work teams working on both of them at the same time. And, and then they realized, you know, Hey, we're, we're kind of, uh, we're kind of duplicating resources here. You know, you know, wasting time and money. Why don't we, you know, why don't we, so why don't we, um, you know, why don't we just combine them and combine them, put them combine them and, you know, put them on the same game. So... Um, this game also was made easier than, easier than the first two games to, um, to encourage new players to, to try the, uh, to try the series. So, it was made simpler on purpose. Hmm. So, um, uh, because, yeah, it's still, it's still, yeah, this is, this is actually, I had an experience about that. I totally understand Nintendo wanting to, you know, wanting to say, you know, hey, we think we made the first games kind of, you know, kind of, kind of too difficult. Let's get the difficult. Let, let's kind of, let, you know, let's kind of crank the, you know, crank the difficulty down a little, little bit because difficult in the game is always a very hard thing to be able to accurately judge because it's like what you may find easy, something else may find, you know, very difficult. You know that kind of stuff. But um, I appreciate, I appreciate the fact what they're trying to do here. I kind of, I kind of felt, however, the, I kind of felt, however, at least for me, this game is a little bit too easy. I, 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 I'm not sure if you had the same experience, George, but it's like they kind of made it a little bit, you know, a little bit more difficult. I thought. I mean, if you try to turn your brain off and play the game, you definitely can screw yourself over. Hmm. But if you're trying and you're thinking, like, yeah, you're right, it is kind of easy in a sense hmm. um you just gotta be a little careful because sometimes you can get yourself like surrounded and then mm -hmm. next thing you yep. know everyone's dead yep <laughs> um yeah no yeah uh yeah yeah I, I definitely thought they did a better job in the later fire Emblem games about like you know balancing difficulty level out uh much better um this also reminded me a lot about um did you ever play so did you ever play either the shining force games on genesis george Yes. This reminded me a little bit about that. I mean, I think this game has more story than that than those games do, but a lot of the gameplay mechanics like felt the same. Ah. Uh, yeah, kind of. I guess it does kind of have somewhat of a uh, similar feeling. Hmm. hmm. I didn't even think of that. I mean, I do like Shining Force. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, trying to, so unique things about this game, um, there's a chance of getting critical hits, uh, with your units, which can do triple the amount of damage done, but you happen to get it. Yes. Yep. Which are very nice. Um, uh, you have, uh, you have, um, 
uh, you earn experience points during battle, of course. Um, the um, uh, you can only get to level twenty. Uh, that's the cap. So. Um, oh really? Yep. Ooh. Uh, however, however, your character can, your character can change class as, as the game goes on. Uh, however, um, you however you do so, uh, even though you get a stat a, a stat bump, your experience level goes all the way back to one. So you have to like, start over again as far as as far as I like, try to get experience like that character. No. So, so do not change classes willy nilly. I mean, you, I mean, I mean, you do want to change classes with some of the people uh, eventually, but just just the just to just to be careful doing it. Right, right. Uh, you also have the support system, which I was surprised to see to see was present this early in the series because I, um, you know, because, uh, you know, because, uh, because, I'm, because because support the, the support system is a very important part about later fire. Uh, it's a very important part in later fire emblem games. I I did not know that it started out this early in the uh uh, uh, uh like the franchise. Um, basically, what that means is that if two characters have a plot really have a plot reason to be close to one another, which is you know. It's, you, you know, for example, like you know, like uh, friends or lovers or whatnot, um, uh, their um, uh, their stats can be boosted up, uh, such as like attack power, like or dodging. Okay. And, yeah, and and uh, support system. Carefully using the support system can make a big difference in battle because, like you know, be, uh, be, uh, um, because you can use that to try to, um, you know, to help get help gain the edge over like a powerful enemy. So I think those are pretty much the special, the special, the special unique things uh, about this game. The kind of, the kind of, that, um, you know, the kind of differentiated, uh, like some of the other um, tactical RPG games, uh, you know, like the sort. But um, uh, this was the, the um, this was a. Uh, well, oh, oh, okay, yeah. Um, uh, book two, which is the new content of the game, uh, takes place um, as mentioned before. Uh, 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 mentioned before, uh, like the sequel to book one, which itself is just kind of like a, a partial remake of the first game of the franchise. Book two takes place two years after the events. Uh, um, uh, after the event of book one, this is not the, again. Again, this is not the only Fire Emblem game to do that. And again, I'm surprised to see how early, how early in the franchise that that, that trick was done. Uh, Fire Emblem for the GBA also like also like also the same thing uh, like their chapters. Like the first, the for the first chapter of the game, uh, you you play for a while, and then like and then like then about like then like book two, like a year a year uh, um, you know, years passed. So um, again, you know, I was surprised to see how early how early in the franchise. I was just surprised how early in the franchise so many things I reckon so many things are present in this game. Because I'm like, oh, this is here. I I didn't expect that, huh? So. Uh, yeah, really, like, really forward thinking. Um, it also kind of, um, you know, it both goes to show how deep and how carefully made the games were, uh, for the time period, and also kind of good, um, it also shows how much, it also shows how little, how little franchise has actually, has actually changed over the years. Uh, minus addition of things like, you know, like 3D graphics, uh, uh voice acting, that kind of stuff. So. Right. Very interesting going back to the past like this. Um, like for sure. So, um... The graphics of this game are very good. I thought they're, uh, I, I thought they're, you know, they're, um, you know, they're very handsome-looking Super NES graphics. Um, you know, like, you know, you have your typical, out, you, you know, your typical outdoor stuff, like you know, like houses, trees, river, or river, uh, uh, rivers, whatnot. Uh, you know, they look very good. Uh, they're not like you know super super detailed, but they are the, you know, but I thought, um, you know, I thought in most cases they had the, you, know, but I thought in most cases they had a very like you know like a, um. Um, throw it out, throw it out, throw it out. Look to them. So, some of the characters I think can be a little bit hard to recognize at a glance because some of the classes kind of look similar to one another. But that was really my own gripe as far as the graphics went. Yeah, I think they're pretty simplistic. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess there could have been a little bit more done about them, but I mean, I don't have any gripes with them really. Other than, I mean, like, like when you get into battle, it looks pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. The overworld yep. stuff yep. is kind of right. simplistic, though. Right. The uh, actually, the graphics for the in battle stuff kind of reminds me of the what it looks like in the the DS games or mm -hmm. game or whatever. Yep. I don't right. know how many there are. Yeah. Uh, the music in the series is pretty good. Um, it's just like your typical, uh, our typical. Typical, typical standard 
uh, fancy, uh, uh, fancy, you know, RPG-ish type music. Um, you know, not bad. Uh, good soundtrack. I thought it made good use. Um, you know, since I, um, you know, some of the music was carried over from the first game, of course, because of book one. So, but I thought they kind of, um, but, um, but, you know, listening to both versions, I thought that, um, I thought the team did a pretty good, pretty good job of, uh, of kind of enhancing that music, um, you know, on the Super NES, especially the same with the Dragon, the, um, you know, the Dragon Quest music, music was done when, when, uh, when, 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 when NES to Super NES. So. Yeah. Uh, you were okay with the music? I didn't hate it? Uh, I mean, you just keep hearing it over and over. It's one of those games where it's like, yeah, it's kind of time to like not <laughs> listen to the music now. So it's not <laughs> like it was grating. It was just like, I'm hearing the same thing over and over again. I think a lot of people would, would kind of just like, this was one of those games where I like watched a video in the background while i played mm -hmm. the yep. game you know i had youtube up and i was watching some stuff and i was like yeah i i'm i'm done with the music already right. again it's not bad it, it, it is good i like it yeah. but you keep hearing it over and over again so sure at right, least exactly. at least for me it's like i'm gonna watch or listen to something in the background <laughs> but um yeah, so um, you know, like um, that's that's really the game, the game in a nutshell. It's like you know, it kind of feels like we're not talking about it a lot, but at the same time, but at the same time, there's you know, you really a can't... lot to this game, but there's also not enough to this game. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, because yeah, because it, yeah, because it, the only way, really, the only way we talk about the game more is if we start doing a deep dive of the story, which I really like, don't want to do. So. Oh uh, yeah, let's not. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, the game, the game's, the, the, you know, like I said, the game's fairly easy, I thought. Uh, you know, you know, I didn't think, however, like, it's pretty breezy. What was your experience with that, George? You know, the battles, the, you know, the battles, the battles don't take too long. You know, I was pretty happy with the pace, uh, I mean, the pacing of the game. Yeah, and I find it pretty interesting that you have to have the main character, like, the main character can go to specific areas that the other uh characters mm. cannot go and then yeah, also you go yeah. to the main castle to seize it and sometimes that opens up uh story dialogue and i think that's pretty cool yes it is yep yeah yeah no yep yeah, so it's there's not always a boss battle at the end it's yep. like you know sometimes it brings up story where two right. two or more characters are conversing yep you're right good point i i, I hadn't thought about that uh there's not many games I've not seen many games that do that, that actually that should do that. Um, another game that does yeah. that. Um, another game does that with some of the battles. Uh, Sui Code Two, uh, Konami's great RPG game uh, for the PlayStation, also has some tactical, also has some tactical, some tactical battles kind of similar to this. And some, yeah. and, um, and, um, and some of those battles, uh, you you only need to um, you only need to have your 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 hero unit actually enter one of the castles or towns to finish the to finish the fight. You don't need to actually beat everybody on on the map. So, um, kind of you know, kind of same idea. But, um, uh, here also with that. So, again, very very impressive for very impressive to see all this stuff in 1994 because this really does seem like ahead of its time, like in many ways. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, apparently it was good enough to make a sequel after this. So. Yeah, and the game sold very well <laughs> in Japan. So, um, you know, yeah. Like, uh, but uh, you know, uh, most people, most people, most people felt that the low difficulty was the was like the right thing to do, uh, because, it, because it did bring a bunch of you know a bunch of new fans into the series. Uh, the the um, there's uh, the few the few contemporary translated Japanese articles that can find about the game talked about both its overall quality and the improvements made to the gameplay. Uh, and presentation of com uh, and the pres presentation of combat over there uh, you know, over the first game of the series is being like you know much much better. So yeah, uh, uh, Famitsu, the famous Japanese gaming magazine, who we've talked about before several times, uh, they gave the game during its initial release in 1994 36 out of 36 out of 40. Yeah, that sounds about right. So um, there's no there's no sales numbers available available but available for how the game sold originally 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 back in, originally back in 1994. Um, however, it's 3D. Uh, how, um, however, however, it, however, it, it's 3DS a remake 
in, uh, remake uh, sold about a, um, you, you sold almost a million um, a million units in Japan. So, you know, like um, oh, well there you go. Yeah, pretty good sales. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of the um, the game, the uh, uh, more recent years, some of the uh, some Western magazines and uh, so, so, so Western magazines and websites websites have also covered the game. Uh, RPG Gamer, for example, um, you know. You know, I felt the game was, uh, the game story was fine without being great, which is what I said. <laughs> um, and they, uh, he also, he also said it was very interesting to see how many, how many gameplay aspects were a precursor to what would come like, um, to what would come later on in the series with the more refined, expanded mechanics of the games, uh, 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 you know, the games uh, in the franchise, which, uh, which I also tried to say earlier. I'm not really sure. How, I'm not really sure how well of a good job I, I did say in that point. But yes, it's like it's like this. This game has many ideas and concepts, which are kind of either half baked or mostly baked, which get fully baked by the time like the later GBA and DS games, uh, um, dead games of the franchise. So yes, and all the relationship stuff right. eventually gets really deep and right. Some so uh, just a bunch of crazy stories and yep. Yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, overall, like, so overall, they gave the game a three and a half out of, uh, um, you know, three and a half, three and a half, they got, like, five stars. Um, basically, uh, their final remarks about it was that they felt that the game was worth seeking out for anybody who's fan of the series. Um, but that, you know, that you were, um, you know, but, um, but if you're not really familiar with Fire Emblem games, you can skip this one and just play some of the later games in the franchise instead. So, with pretty much their final thought on it. Uh, uh, and Nintendo Life, Nintendo Life also got the guys reviewed the game. They gave it like edit. Um, uh, they gave it like eight out of ten uh, stars. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, um, the overall the overall fan ratings of this game also seem to agree with that stuff. You know, like um, you know, three point eight out of five stars is the average at like you know like two hundred votes, pretty much. Um, uh, forty hours. It, like about the game length, which they say the game is, which, which I think is right. You know that seems. Uh, for when I played the game, full disclosure, uh, full disclosure, like in the Georgia, I were able to finish the game, but no, uh, no, way too long. But, uh, but yeah, forty hours I think is right. You know that feels right for the um, you know for how you know for, for how for how for how long the game would be. So. Um, I think, I think that, I think that Mike over, um, um, sorry, like, you know, like Mike Mohenke, uh, Mike Mohenke at RPG Gamer, uh, hit the nail on the head. Um, if you're a fan of the Fire Emblem series, this game is definitely worth, like, fun checking out. Because, you know, this is a very good, it's a very playable game of the series. It definitely is fun. Um, you know, it's very interesting to see how many ideas and concepts were, concepts were, concepts were either, were either already present or being worked on all the way back in 1994, uh, for, like, the franchise. Um, however, if you're, however, if you're, if you're new to the, however, if you're new to the Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem series, or, or like me, came on board with the GBA games, uh, probably better off skipping this one and just playing some of the later games instead, because, you know, uh, those, because, because those ideas and concepts got finished in a much better, much better form, uh, later on, later on, later on in those games. So I, so I agree with that definitely, definitely 100%. It's a fun game. I do too. Yeah. yeah. You know, like it's a fun game. For what it is, it definitely, um, you know, you know, if you're a fan, of, you know, if you're a diehard tactical RPG, tactical RPG fan, um, or you're a fan of the series and never play, um, and and, and never play this game for whatever reason, uh, but yeah, this is definitely worth checking out. Otherwise, you otherwise, you otherwise, otherwise, I, I think you can skip it. Yeah, as um, long as you're not a super fan, I don't see a reason to sure uh, play yeah. through this. Just yeah, play the the newer ones. Uh, the fan, the, uh, the, 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 fan, the fan translation though, however, is very impressive. You know, uh, uh you know, it's always, you yes. know, you know, we've talked about this before, but it always wows me just how much, just how much of labor of love that all these fan translations are and how good most of them are. Uh, and like, you know, a lot of, a lot of games are really hard to, to translate because mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you can't fit like all the words you want to. So you have to like rewrite the script and see what you can fit in. And some games kind of suffer with the translations because they can't fit into too much but right. some they're able to figure out how to to fit all of it in because you know when it's written in kanji or whatever right. the heck it is you know you can fit a lot more words right so, exactly so yeah english sucks is what i'm trying to say <laughs> we should all learn japanese <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> that should be the official language of the world so 
So, uh, yeah, I don't so so yeah, I don't so I don't have any like major biting complaints of this game overall. You know, I you know I already mentioned most of my most of my nitpicks on the game. You know, music, uh, you know, the, you know, the story music's kind of meh. Um, you know, the, you, you, you know the combats the combats a little bit easy. Um, you know, if you if you played any other um you played any other tactic RPG games in a little, little bit of the past, um. I thought um I, I thought the controller was a little bit was, was, was a little bit clunky in spots. Did you say probably uh, um uh this may have been um this, this may have been an emulation an emulation issue. Did you have that issue, George? No, I didn't actually. Hmm, okay, all right. What exactly uh, what was what exactly was going on? The cursor the cursor the cursor just felt slow, you know. Like moving no, around. I don't the, think the I screen. had that problem. Were you yeah. holding the D-pad or were you? Uh, pressing I, it. Um, yeah, I was usually holding it. Oh, uh, I don't know. I yeah. usually just like just tap, tap, tap. Yeah, I probably should have done oh, that. I don't know. So yeah. <laughs> um, did you have any? So did you have any? Uh, really? Um, you know, like um, things you things you really loved or hated about the game that you are um you haven't the um for that you for the, for the chapter already mentioned previously, George. Uh, no, I didn't really have any problems. I kind of like how, uh, easier it was. So, sure. like, yep. this is, like I said before, this is kind of like one of those games where you don't need to, like, super get into it. But, like, I mean, you do need to pay attention a little bit. Mm hmm No. But, but you don't have to pay 100% attention to. You don't need to be... You know, you don't have to like think of strategies while you're at work to figure out how to beat that one guy. You right? Know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just make sure your units don't die. Make sure your units get somewhat of an even amount of experience between everybody. But uh, mm. also make sure Marth doesn't die. Oh yes. Yeah, and also level him up because if he does die, that's hmm. not good. Yes, like you know. Uh, also, uh, also, uh, also, paying attention to tactics is also somewhat important. Uh, the game uses the, the game. The, the game uses a modified paper, uh, uh, a modified, a modified paper rock scissors system, where some types of units are more effective against other types of units. So, yeah. learning, plus learning that to making sure to take advantage of that, and also, and also taking, and also taking advantage of the, taking advantage of like the support mechanic is very important. So, uh, both those things will get you like pretty far in the game. Just. Just even right. not like a very good player, so, yeah. um, yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, it's a shame that. Yeah, it's a shame that. Yeah, it's a shame that with all the re-releases of the game and all the and the popular uh, um you know, the, uh, uh, and the popularity of the series now in the West, this the, with the West, this game this game still hasn't gotten a Western release. But you know, maybe someday. Who knows? It did. Probably have, not, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, by now probably not. Uh, by not, it, you know. You, you know, it's just a shame, but so. Yeah. What did um as, um as a final note? What as a final note? What I did find um what I did find very interesting is that actually this game was popular enough to have an anime based off of it. Um, they released two episodes that, um did two episodes in 1996 uh which were based off the game uh which have been which have been translated and translated and released to the West as well. Um, however, however, there's only two episodes because of the two episodes because the, uh, because the episodes, because the episodes didn't sell very well, so it was never finished. Oh. So, it's very curious they actually brought over to the West two episodes of an anime that didn't, that, that um, you know, that did so poorly, you know? But, yeah. that, that seems strange, but, okay. <laughs> Sometimes strange things like that happen. Yes. So. Yes. Um, so, um, just like, uh, um, and, uh, just, uh, just, uh, um, you know, just like real quick, uh, the remake of this game, uh, Fire Emblem, New, New Mystery of the Emblem, uh, like the DS is actually, is actually a remake of the DS Fire Emblem game, uh, curiously enough. So there's not really too much different about that game. There's custom, um, you know, there's a, you know, better graphics, better graphic music, of course, um, uh, there's now there's now customizable avatars you can use like the main character um the additional story content that the bs game had is also um um, um is also included like in this so uh it's the first time that is it, um uh, it's also the first time that a 
that a, a game originally, originally released for the uh, Stale View got released in any form by Nintendo. So, hmm. uh, very huh. curious about that. So, but uh, yeah, um, I I could not, I I looked I could not find a patch a fan uh, tra- a trans- a translation patch a patch but but that uh for, for, for that version of the game unfortunately. So, but. You know, at least the, at least the, at least the, at least the patch available, for, uh, the patch available for, for, uh, for, for, for Super Famicom version is, um, is very, very good. So, yes, can't yes. complain about that. So, um, because because this game was so popular, uh, it's a very cheap game to get. Um, even if it comes from like Japan. So, uh, let's talk prices. Uh, if you watch, there are copies of the game that can be, there are, there, there are some copies of the game that were sold by North American sellers. So, um, so, uh, like, if you don't want to, so if you, so you, uh, so if you would prefer to, t- to deal with a more domestic seller, you know, U.S., uh, U.S. and Canada seller, uh, for, for, for trust reasons and or for quicker shipping, uh, there are some copies, there are some copies available, like, available in these countries. Um... There is one currently. Uh, currently, as of time, uh, as as of time, both like record this. There's one copy, a copy of this game, cart only uh, available on eBay from another American seller. Uh, being listed to being listed to total price. These all these prices include shipping for thirteen dollars. There, no. there was one. Uh, uh, there, there, uh, there was one cart. There was one cart version of the game that sold. That sold recently for eleven dollars. And, there, um, and, and, and there's one cart, there one cart also included with the, with the Japanese uh, strategy guide for this game, uh, bundled. Uh, 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 that's over $16. That's pretty good. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are currently are currently no CIB copies of this game available for sale by North American sellers, but three of them sold recently. Uh, those prices were that um um and um and those copies would cost those copies sold for sold for nineteen twenty and twenty twenty six dollars. That's really good. Well, what's even better is that if you're willing to um you know what's even better is that you're willing to like you know wait for shipping. Uh, there's there's plenty of uh, 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 there's plenty of copies of the, there's plenty of copies of this game available from Japanese sellers for uh you know for even like cheaper prices. Uh, twenty twenty four copy twenty four copies currently listed for forty one copies. Uh, like recently sold, uh, carts sold anywhere from five to seventeen dollars. Wow! Uh, from Japanese sellers, right? Uh, CIB copies sold anywhere from tw- so CIB examples 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 sold anywhere from eight to forty four dollars. Oh, hmm. Uh, and, and unlike many Japanese games, there, there I could not find I could not find uh, any evidence that anybody that uh, any of any evidence that anybody that anybody has ever done a, a repro version of this game, which I, um, you know, which is curious, but you know, there are no nobody's nobody's taking the time to put it to, to, to put this game onto a North American style cart, uh, um, you know, with the with the with the with the, with the translation patch already applied, uh, compared to many of the Japanese games, which I kind of, you know, which is kind of strange because considering how well this game sold, so, but mm. yeah. Oh well. So, anyway, if you have the means to be able to play it, um, you know, uh, you know, for example, if you, for, like, for example, if, um, if you know Japanese or if you have like a, a clone system there, um, you can like apply the, um, you apply the patch. You can get a, um, you know, like a cart version of the cart version of like, this game very cheap. So, yeah, some good prices there. Yep. Yeah. For sure. So. I couldn't, and so, and so, obviously, well, I should say, well, I shouldn't say obviously. Uh, being a tactical role-playing game, these games, the, the, um, you know, these games, these games, don't, these games don't, don't usually have any like cheat codes or whatnot. I couldn't find any. Um, however, I could not, I, I could not find any, uh, um, you know, a, uh, um, any, any information about any like bugs or hidden features or whatnot in this game. So, um, pretty, pretty well programmed. Then, if it doesn't have any of those, so. Intelligence systems usually you know, intelligence systems usually usually knows usually knows what they're, usually knows what they're doing like they're making their games. So kudos to them. Yay. So Alright, I think that's a I think that's a wrap for this episode. Uh George, did, did, did you have any other uh, um your final thoughts or whatnot that you want to say about the game? Uh no, not really. I think I said everything. Sure. Okay. Cool. Alright. Well uh for our next episode. Uh, we are going to look at it, look at it, look at some games of a genre that we've not covered yet on this podcast. Mostly because I was curious to see how they are. Um, 
you know, we're going to, um, you know, um, so we're going to cover, so we're going to cover two games in, in that episode because, the, uh, um, the, uh, the, because we feel like it. Well, that's because, you know, you, um, you know, you, you know, it kind of, it kind of seems silly talking like uh, talking, talking about one game without mentioning the other game. And both these games are pretty casual enough that there's no problem covering both of them in the same episode. Yeah. Uh, we're going to cover the two pool games that came out for the, uh, Super NES, aka Billards. Um, you know, to use the more official uh, official name, uh, Championship Pool and Side Pocket. Um, Side Pocket also Side Pocket also uh, Side Pocket also got a Genesis a Genesis a Genesis release. Championship Pool appears to be appears to be unique to the Super NES. So, we're going to talk about those games and see how they compare and contrast and whatnot. So, should be a fun episode. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see how they are. Yeah, you know, I, play, you know, yeah, you know, I, you know, I enjoy pool games. Um, you know, the NES has a, the NES has some like very has very good pool games. I'm a little bit surprised actually that Super NES, the Super NES, only has like two pool games on it, but, um, you know, but that's all there is. So, um, but anyway, um, thank you again as always for listening to this episode. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, feedback, etc., feel free to feel free to check us out on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can also send me an email directly if you want to using the email uh, the SNES podcast at yahoo.com. We also have a Patreon where you can get like uh, special perks uh, for being a supporter for like like for, those, like for as little as a dollar a month. You can get shouted out at the end of every episode, like I'm going to do right now for Chad, Corey, and David. Thank you guys very much for, for your support. Uh, higher tiers can also give you access to early to early, to early, ep- early episodes or to be able to dictate it, a game uh, for us to cover. So. Uh, we have a few months of this podcast already planned, but, you know, there's always room for, 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 like, for guest episodes or, or, or whatnot to plug in without any kind of problem. So, um, yeah, by all means, please check us out there if you want to. Uh, that website is, um, so that website is www.patreon.com forward slash, uh, the SNES podcast. So, George, where they, um, if person's, if, it, if the person's inclined to reach you, how can they do so? Uh, Twitter's a thing if you're interested. Uh, my handle, whatever the heck it is, uh, on there is at underscore derpkin underscore that is at underscore D E R P K I T T E N underscore, and that's about it. Alrighty then. Um, so, uh yeah uh let me just let me just finish off by saying that the uh as usual the japanese the japanese box art i think is like much um you know i i think it's like very very cool uh it's very definitely anime style but uh it's better than anything we had over here in the west of the time but <laughs> i also find it curious I, I mean i also find it curious that the actual words fire emblem are actually uh, fire emblem are actually spelled out spelled out on english on the cover yeah so it's we it's weird the hybrid it's weird the mixing of the mixing of English and Japanese uh, sometimes. Well, they do it. They do it a lot. They do it a lot. Yeah, it, 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 it's just strange to see how they do it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I can read that. Yes. <laughs> uh, like you. Yeah. Um, uh, what cracks me up is that yeah, what cracks me up oftentimes is that almost always the warranty information. Isn't like it's printed in English. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Along the warning, this game's this game's meant for sale for sale use for, for, for sale use uh, only in Japan. Like, do not uh, use not it. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. So well, well, uh, the FBI is gonna kick down my door. You're playing a Japanese game. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it's. It's very strange. Actually, let me finish the episode on this, like you know, like uh, quick, uh, quick side tangents because I always because because a it's relevant and b I always thought that you know b I, I always thought this was interesting. Uh, if you look at Super NES boxes over the years, uh, during the during the years the system boxes came out, originally originally when the system came out in North America in 1991, well in the U.S. the boxes originally said for sale use only uh, in the U.S. Eventually, they eventually got they eventually they, they got changed to for sale for sale use only in the U.S. and Canada. Then it got changed to for sale for sale use only in USA, Canada, and Mexico. And then finally got changed for uh, and then finally they got changed to for sale use only only in USA, Canada, and Latin America. My favorite part is when we annex Latin America. 
<laughs> I'm glad they can get video games now. It, it's very weird. <laughs> uh, so on that, like, uh, uh, head scratcher, folks. Thank you again for listening, and see you again next time. Nintendo controls 80% of the video market. But no matter how you play the game, or which game you play, things definitely have come a long way since Pac-Man. Now you're playing with power. Deep of power. Greg, you're welcome to play pool with me, but I make sure that there's no pool in my pool table. I mean, pee. Ah, damn oh. it, I screwed up the joke. <laughs>